Thanks, guys. You're all great friends, too. Even when I don't understand me. What am I afraid of? Seriously? I've seen some real fucked up shit around the wasteland. I've seen foals bought, sold, and rented. I've seen monsters tear a pony to pieces. I've seen ghouls crawling out of the earth. But for the most part, I've never been afraid of it. It's usually more of an, oh fuck, this is gonna hurt, than I'm afraid. You wanna know fear? Fear is being strapped to a table as a permanent lunch for a bunch of cannibals, knowing that they're going to rip you apart and eat you over and over and over again. Fear is knowing that you might spend years or centuries that way, your flesh fueling the nightmare and you helpless to stop it. But even that's nothing. You want real fear. Fear is not knowing. Fear is looking at the future and knowing that something bad is hidden in it. And the greatest fear of all is knowing that that something bad might be you. I'd rather take a dive through a dragon's digestive tract than face that. Okay. Four zodiacs. One of them was a heavy mech. The zebra probably had a dangerous sniping skill. And I anticipated some sort of deadly diversity from the bull wielder. The pegasus? Eh, I had nothing. Poison on the needles? On our side, I was unarmed. My horn wasn't working. My legs weren't working. Rampage was a filly, and Scotch, P-21, and Lacuna were unarmed. Well, only one thing to do. Rampage, on the zebra. Lacuna, arrows on the big guy. P-21, use whatever you have hidden on the pegasus. Scotch, find glory. Arrows is mine. And with a battle cry, I snatched up an eating utensil from the table in my teeth and lunged towards the bow-wielding green unicorn. No pony moved as I flopped on my belly with my mouth set determinedly around my weapon. I'll cut your heart out, I swore, as I swung my head wildly in his general direction. Every pony just stared in shock as I wiggled towards him. Then, Triage's magic enveloped me, and I was lifted into the air and dangled in front of her as if held by the scruff of my neck. The college it is home of the Zodiacs, you half-horned idiot. The gray medical pony told me firmly, and with just a hint of exasperation. How do you think we get all the caps to get this place running? Trust me, sickly ponies are not cash makers. I glared at her, my teeth tightening as the weapons handle, and she looked at me a little uneasily. And take that spoon out of your mouth. I spat it right in her face as hard as I could, and the impact distracted her just long enough to break through her magic's hold. Lacuna's purple glow immediately enveloped me, and I threw my forelegs around Triage's neck, pressing my horn to her throat. Now, my horn may be compact, but I bet it's long enough to hit one of those vain thingies in your neck. And since you saved my life, like, three times, it'd be real shitty to kill you. But I'm not going anywhere with them. So, Zodiacs leave. We get our gear. We get Glory, if she's feeling better and wants to come. Then, and only then, will I meet this professor. I felt her swallow. For a tense moment, I hung there. Wondering just how big a mess this would be if some pony said no. Then the security bot said in a tiny mare's voice, Please back down, Sagittarius. I believe that security will come see me now, in good faith. The security bot's metal head turned towards me. Correct, Blackjack? I glanced up at the indentation my horn was making on the paralyzed triage and didn't dare nod. Sure. The green unicorn had an arrow trained on my eye, but he couldn't be sure I would take Trials with me. Then he nodded once, and the four carefully backed out of the cafeteria. Go get our things, Rampage. P-21, check on Glory. I said as I hovered there in Lacuna's magic. If the Zodiacs tried something, they'd have the best chances of surviving and evading. Got me, Lacuna? Easily. Though I feel obliged to point out that typically heroes do not take doctors that have repeatedly saved their lives as hostages. The purple alicorn said wearily. The goddess does not know if she should be impressed or disappointed. Or concerned. But she didn't have to add that one out loud. Triage didn't say a word till my friends returned. I couldn't find glory. 
P-21 informed me as they dumped my gear on the table. Dusk and the other one are gone, too, he continued, clearly worried about how I'd take the news. To be honest, I didn't like it, but I couldn't help glory myself. Ever since meeting me, her life had been one painful mistake after another. If Dusk could get her back into the Enclave, good. It wasn't like I was going to be around much longer anyway. Now that I had guns, barding, and leg braces, I released triage. She staggered back, rubbing her throat with her hoof, and stared back at me in shock. You... you would have killed me. Don't know. Maybe. I replied as Akuna buckled the braces onto my limbs. I looked at her shocked and hurt expression and pointed to the scar on my chest. You see that? Leo Zodiac did that. Ares burned me. Heck, even that Virgo mare used hostages to try and kill me. And besides the dozens of ponies I've had shooting at me for a bounty. So, having four trot in on me like that was no good. Once my friend was okay, you might have pointed out that I needed to talk to the professor. No problem. Like to meet her. But spring four zodiacs on me was not a smart move. Kuna helped me to strap the barding over my braces. Be glad it didn't go bad. Still, I can't believe you did that. Triage muttered, flushing. I wasn't feeling very sympathetic at the moment. In case you didn't notice, the ponies try and kill me a lot. You didn't take me seriously, so I grabbed what leverage I could. And you're a bit of a nag, I added mentally. Yeah, I help ponies. Yeah, DJ Pony thinks I'm a hero. Me, I'm just Blackjack. And I'll do whatever I have to against an enemy to survive and save my friends. Triage actually smiled. <laughs> That's the first sensible thing I've heard you say. Getting approval from Triage was certainly a mixed expression. Sort of like Scalpel telling me good job. Armed and armored, the five of us walked out. I might not have been a smart pony, but I was no pony's fool. Clearly, my treatment of triage hadn't endeared me to the college, but I was in little mood to worry about that. Finding out, the, finding out these ponies had sent the Zodiac after my head didn't endear them to me either, and while I was grateful for their doctors for saving my life and the lives of my friends, I wasn't going to roll over for them. The planetarium was on the northeast corner of the complex a huge, heavy concrete building topped by a massive dome. The Zodiacs, with the flaming red Ares in her power armor, the blue Aquarius Colt, and a soft pink unicorn mare, presumably Virgo, wearing a pit buck were in attendance. I looked at the first Zodiac I had ever encountered. She looked the same as Scotch. Back outside Merrimer, I hadn't realized I'd almost shot a filly. I'd be more concerned with the color on my EFS back then. As we stepped inside the heavy structure, scotch tape balked. We're... we're not going underground, are we? Panic rapidly spread across her features as she looked around the foyer. With the heavy gray walls, it looked like we already were. Relax, scotch, I said, smiling at her. She didn't, but she continued with us. The green unicorn, now without his bow, greeted me with a challenging stare. His eyes took in my weapons. I supposed we'd have to leave them behind to meet the professor. Instead, he looked at Taurus's rifle. I heard you killed Jem, Minnie, and Taurus, he said gravely. Is that true? The question took me by surprise. I could still hear Jem pleading her twin to go ghosty. The Reaper Deus killed Taurus. Minnie died in an accident. Jem killed herself to kill Deus. I replied softly. I would have killed them if I had to. They were after my head, after all. They were after your pit buck. Sure, they might have been a little intense about getting it, but they weren't after the bounty. He explained with a little shrug. Virgo was the one after the money. She didn't understand why you were different from the others. Kid's a prodigy, but damned thick sometimes. He took a deep breath. We were just wondering. We didn't know. With that, he turned and led us to some concrete stairs. We passed a two-century-old display. Explore the constellations. Get your free temporary Magic Zodiac cutie mark tattoo at the gift shop. 
I'm going to clear a Twilight Sparkle cutout. How can you use fillies and colds to collect bounties? P21 asked curiously. Rampage did not look happy about that, which was a bit odd to see considering her current apparent age. Because they're willing and able, he replied evenly. We don't use just any pony, and this place needs calves the same as any settlement. And they work. Any village has colts. Aquarius can blend in, get intelligence, drug drinks. Kids good like that. Gemini was even better at getting in and taking down marks. It was a game to those two. Virgo's more of a special case. She's a Zodiac because her father's a Zodiac. He screwed his face up and added, Sorta. He stopped at a pair of double doors. Okay, Professor Zodiac's inside. She's protected, so don't try and pull something again. She just wants to talk. All right. I can do talking. I like talking, I said with a smile. See? Blackjack being calm and civilized. Sagittarius didn't look too particularly convinced. The door opened to an immense domed chamber. I merely thought of the Reaper's Arena, though this room was far smaller than the immense space. A dozen tiers ran around the perimeter of the room. Some still had a black floor cushion scattered around them, but most of them had been removed for the rest of the junk that occupied the space. In the center rose a massive black piece of equipment, studded with hundreds of gemstones that twinkled brightly. A large metal cylinder stood next to it. Cables snaked all over the place, and I spotted several pieces that looked like sand dog bionics. Countless robots, ranging from protective ponies to sentry bots, stood silently on the tiers and around the edge of the central room. And... In my amber night vision, I could see the telltale stealth ripple next to one of them. I love this part, Rampage muttered to Scotch Tape. The olive filly shrank away from all the mechanical devices around us, chewing on her bottom lip and fidgeting with her goggles. The lights suddenly dimmed, and the massive machine in the center lit up and slowly rose into the air. From the countless gems emerged a million points of light that splashed against the great dome overhead, and formed slowly into a starry sky. Unlike the arena's enchanted ceiling, this projection looked deeper. Still, I couldn't help but feel these little motes to be somewhat lame. They just didn't match up with those tiny lights I'd seen in Mariponi's memory. Wait a minute. The stars were moving, slowly, then flying off the ceiling and drawing together into an immense glowing unicorn head, floating in the air above the central machine and staring down at us. A booming voice echoed throughout the chamber. I am the great and powerful Professor Zodiac, mistress of the mechanical, lore keeper of legend. Look upon me and tremble. Scotch tape gave a little shriek and dove under me, shaking as she hugged my hoof. P21 kept up backing towards the door. Lacuna was staring at the image in mild confusion. Rampage, however, just grinned as she looked up at the starry head. I looked down at Scotch and scowled, then levitated out my shotgun and turned back to the floating head. Yeah? Well, I'm Blackjack, the tired and annoyed, so turn down the volume and turn up the lights before I start sharing my bad day. I bellowed up at her as I racked around into the chamber. She blinked in shock, and then the stars almost instantly scattered back to their original positions. The room's lights came on a bit, the volume dropped to a normal level and from the device in the center flickered rainbow beams. They formed into a middle-aged, normal-sized silver mare with glowing white eyes that scowled at Rampage. You told her, didn't you? There was something off about her, though besides her being a glowing translucent projection. Was it her face? Her tail? She looked just odd somehow.